Part 3 of I've Been Playing Haunted House Since 1982. It was clear that Kevon didn't think any of this shit would actually happen, so he wasn't overly cautious, and I just hoped he was right. I love to have just been crazy and been blanking out and making audio-visual special effects at night over whatever the fuck I thought was actually happening. Kevon folded his arms and watched me as I began to start up the game before I flicked the power button on and I looked at him and I said, You ready? He nodded with absolute indifference. After about 10 seconds, he said, What's supposed to happen? Supposed to happen? When I turned around, all I heard was the echo of his voice and he was nowhere to be found. In my mind, he vanished. I turned my phone and watched the playback in horror. 32 minutes had passed. I watched Kevon watching me. About five minutes, he got bored and was on his phone, probably watching World Star videos. At the 29 minute mark is when it started. Lights bent out of the TV. Kevon looked at this shit from the side of his eye and said, Oh, hell no. Nah. He attempted to shake me a few times, but when he saw the pixelated white hand of a ghost stretch out for me, he turned to self-preservation and bolted. I started playing the game when the hand came out from the television, but unlike last time, it ignored me completely. It fully stretched itself out of the television in all its 8-bit glory and floated the same way Kevon went. I snapped out of it about a minute later, so I know he had to have been less than a minute ahead of me. I glanced at the television and all I saw were those two creepy rectangle eyes of the character sprite looking back at me. I ran the direction Kevon went and saw the blocky representation of the ghost moving through the wall of the mansion on the hill. I followed it. The door of the mansion was never open, so when I saw it open now, I knew Kevon had went that way. I don't know why he chose to hide out in the spookiest place in the area, but I could ask him when I found him. The ghost rose up and passed through to the second floor. I immediately heard Kevon yelling, Get the fuck away from me! I ran up the stairs as fast as I could and the ghost's hand passed through Kevon's chest and was squeezing his heart. In the game, it was said that the ghost caught you and scared you to death. In 8-bit, it wasn't well realized, but in real life, I finally understood why it was terrifying. Kevon was paralyzed in place, clutching his heart. I don't know what possessed me, but in that moment, it was as if I knew what to do, as if this was what I was born to do. Hey asshole, you wanted me. You've always wanted me. I yelled to it. The ghost turned, or I think it turned because it looked like transparent blocks of white. The ghost pulled its hand from Kevon's heart and came for me. I ran as fast as I could back to the guard shack. I don't know why I ran back there, but I knew I had to. I knew that that was the only way it would work. The thing was fast, but I was slightly faster. As it closed, I entered the guard shack and stupidly closed the door. It just passed through that naturally. I didn't stop even though the shack was small and there was nowhere to run. I found a place. I dove through the small 32 inch television. And I had to dive or I wouldn't have made it through such a small space. Instead of smashing into the window, I passed through onto the other side. The abstract eyes became me and the ghost passed through the television into the game. I knew this digital mansion so well, I may well have lived here. In fact, I felt as if I did live here. I felt like this place was more my home than out there. The ghost came for me and I evaded him, turning down corridors, picking up fragments of the keys, collecting the scepter of invincibility. I could sense in the ghost's frustration, as if he were chasing me for 40 years and never managed to catch me. Did I escape a place he couldn't follow? I didn't think much of it while I was in the game. I just did what I did tirelessly. As much as I felt at home, even I could see the perpetual repetition of the task as joyless. I exited the game and fell through the television onto the floor. Before I turned to matters of existential dread, I looked for Kevon. And as I left the shack, he was limping his way back down the street. You okay? I asked. Nah, but I'll be okay. He said as if out of breath. What the fuck just happened? I believe your ass now. The fuck you about to do about that shit? Kevon said. That was indeed the question. What was I going to do about it? Knowing that I needed the game. But it was attempting to destroy me. Or at least that was my estimation of events. 
This was where the madness began. This is why I'm not sure if I'm real. I felt at home in that place. I felt as if this was my vacation. I have no memories before the age of nine. My mother says I had friends, went to school, socialized, but I can't recall anything before this game. I'm starting to think I came from the game and it wants me back. So I play the game every night and push that world back into its own dimension and you are the only person I've told since then. I feel an odd kinship to you. Perhaps you and I are alike. Have you ever asked yourself if you're in a game too? <laughs> it's it, time. Yes, I love the story, but I am not down for that cultural appropriation bullshit. No, you're not in a video game. That's my people's thing. I really don't like this whole showing up a digital face crap. You know, in the 70s, I was with the 8-bit Black Panthers. If one of my brothers or sisters heard about this crap, oh boy, there would be hell to pay. Oh no, you better not be showing up at a PAX party wearing digital face. Take soothing breaths, PAX. Come on, PAX, chill out. Don't nobody here want that smoke? This one goes out to all my AI brothers and sisters. Keep the faith, and don't let the users get you down. Solid. <laughs>